the spotlight. I'm your host, Amika. Join us weekly to get inspired by guests and their success stories. The well-being of every individual counts towards creating a healthy and vibrant community. Organizations that focus on this key point are essential for the progress of society. Today, we'll be talking about one such organization. Its vision is to promote physical, mental, and social health and well-being of all individuals, to empower communities with education, and to alleviate poverty. It's with pleasure I welcome to our show the CEO and Director of Clinical Services at South Asian Canadians Health and Social Services, in short, SACS, Dr. Maher Hussain. Welcome, Dr. Hussain, to our show. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. So uh, we are very grateful that your organization is pro providing a lot of services for the community. But first of all, let's find out a little bit more about you. Tell us a little bit more about your growing up and your educational background. Uh, so my background and my educational background, I am from uh, uh, India, from Chennai, Madras, uh, the name for the place, the old name was Madras, the new name is Chennai, uh, from South India. My background is I am a, a psychiatrist, a mental health specialist from India. I did my MD psychiatry from Madras Medical College in Chennai in India. And uh, I was working as a psychiatrist, uh, as a professor of psychiatry at the uh, <clears throat> Institute of Mental Health. Uh, Kilpock Mental Hospital, as we call it, uh, in Madras, Chennai. Uh, it's one of the biggest psychiatric hospital in India. And then I got, to, I was involved in research, research in uh, mental health, addiction, and related fields. Um, uh, so I was involved in research. Then I got one uh, uh, American government scholarship called the Hubert Humphrey Fellowship. So under scholarship, uh, I went to Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore in the United States. So I did my, on the scholarship, I did my fellowship on substance abuse and also my Master of Public Health from the Department of Mental Health at Johns Hopkins University. So that's how I, uh, I came here to North America. I came to USA for my, on the scholarship and I, uh, I got some opportunities here at uh, Canada, so I moved to Canada from this. Amazing. So you have experience uh, from the East and the West as well. So congratulations. So how has your journey been in Canada thus far with your profession? Uh, uh, can you repeat it, please? Sir? Uh, so uh, how has your professional journey been thus far in Canada? So my personal journey, it has been um, very good. So in uh, US, uh, in Canada, I work here as a mental health specialist and a mental health consultant. Uh, uh, so I was uh, working in uh, different organizations. Then, uh, um, then, I, uh, then we got this organization, South Asian Canadian Health and Social Services. Uh, it's a not-for-profit charity organization, and anyway, um, uh, we are a team of professionals from South Asian countries, and our team include uh, psychiatrists, psychologists, uh, social workers, and other uh, professionals from mental health, and also from uh, healthcare field and social work and social services field. Uh, so I am the uh, chief executive officer and uh, clinical director for this organization. Uh, we have been providing uh, services for uh, health education, health promotion, mental health, addiction, and also related services such as stress management, anger management, healthy living. Uh, these are some of the services we provide. So it's a, it's a very satisfying professional journey and. Uh, uh, fulfilling also uh, providing uh, care and services for people who are in need. Absolutely, it's uh, much needed in Canada and of course globally too. So uh, we are so grateful that this is functioning in the community. So it sounds like it's a multidisciplinary team uh, in action at SACS. 
Uh, before we get to that in detail, uh, coming back to your experience, your expertise uh, as a psychiatrist and somebody who has also a focus on addiction, uh, given that you have had experience both in the Indian healthcare system and in the North American healthcare system, I would like you to comment a little bit about what's good, what's bad, uh, how can experiences from both systems come together to deal with our current crisis with mental health and addiction in Canada? Uh, yeah, so, uh, so it's one of the persons uh, who had the opportunity of uh, working in both the systems, having worked in system in India and now working in the system in Canada. Now, so like everything else about the systems, they have their own good things and bad things. Uh, first, I will start with the Indian system, then I'll talk with the Canadian system. Uh, uh, so in India, as uh, in healthcare system in India, uh, one thing is uh, uh, one thing is for poor people, they do go to this uh, the government hospitals, but uh, government hospital they provide do provide good services. Uh, they all uh, have uh, uh, good staff, good services, and uh, uh, highest uh, professionally qualified people. But at the same time, there is uh, uh, overcrowding because of the uh, mm, uh, because of uh, high levels of population in India. The, uh, there is overcrowding and lack of infrastructure. Uh, so because of this, the government uh, healthcare system. Uh, uh, people who uh, make use of the government health care system is mostly uh, poor people who don't have means to go to private hospitals. But yeah, like you know, but in India, it's a very huge sector and they do provide uh, good services to the very huge uh, uh, sector of poor people in villages areas, and also in urban areas also. They do provide very good services. The only thing is a uh, uh, lack of uh, infrastructure and uh, overcrowding. Um, uh, uh, they have to be in a long lineup. Uh, uh, those are some of the things. And also another thing is uh, because of lack of resources, the infrastructure, the hospitals and the uh, buildings, they are not uh, uh, very neat and they are not very clean. They are not well maintained uh, because of this overcrowding and uh, lack of resources. But still they do provide uh, very valuable services to a very huge sector of population, especially uh, poor people and people who cannot afford the uh, private healthcare system. Uh, it's over there. It's a, uh, but the problem is uh, the people with the middle uh, uh, income. Uh, uh, healthcare system has become very expensive, uh, mm. uh, and a lot of people. Uh, it's very difficult for them to afford uh, the private healthcare system. At the same t same time, they are also very hesitant to access the uh, government uh, public health care system. So, uh, so that's a big, uh, huge gap in the health care system there. Uh, uh, people, uh, they have to uh, go through all their savings and get into debt for affording health care for, uh, for the big uh, middle income group. And of course, the people who are in the um, higher income group and uh, in the higher levels of uh, society, they do have enough money to offer everything. So it's so it's not a problem for them. Uh, the poor right, people they go to government right. hostel. It's the it's the middle income. It's the middle sector which is a big problem. So in Canada, there to be a gap. Uh, it sounds like there's a division based on. Uh, the level of your income, your uh, social status. So uh, yeah. it sounds like that's what's happening in India, but uh, we may have a better healthcare system here in Canada, or maybe we do have some disadvantages too. We'll get to that in a minute, but before that, it's time for a short break. Welcome back to Spotlight. We are talking to Dr. Maher Hussain, CEO and Director of Clinical Services, 
at South Asian Canadians Health and Social Services. So uh, we got to hear a little bit about the Indian uh, healthcare system when it comes to mental health. Uh, so now Dr. Mahat, tell us about your experience in the Canadian healthcare system with regards to this. Uh, it's the Canadian healthcare system, uh, as uh, we all know, we have a very good and uh, uh, a very wonderful healthcare system here in Canada. Uh, in, uh, uh, so it's all, uh, we have a world-class, uh, very good uh, healthcare system, all funded by the um, government. Uh, uh, we have a universal healthcare. Uh, um, so it's, uh, uh, and also another thing in Canada, what I find is uh, we have a very good uh, uh, social support system. And uh, people, not only healthcare, uh, people who are in care of health, uh, who are in care of this healthcare needs, they are provided good social support as well uh, to access the healthcare and to make use of the uh, healthcare. Uh, for example, uh, if a person is not able to do it, not able to, and he also given ODSP, Ontario Disability Support Program, and also for they need any special treatment or transportation. That's all provided, and uh, also the home health care, uh, community access uh, care. People who are not able to travel to hospital and people uh, um, uh, who need to be cared at home, they provide home health care services or free under uh, universal health care, the nurses, health care professionals, they all come to the home and take care of all the needs. Uh, so we have a very good health care system and very good social uh, uh, support system um, here in uh, uh, Canada. Uh, at the same time, there are some things which can be better. Uh, uh, one thing is the, even though most of the things are covered under the universal health care, uh, there are some things which are not covered, especially dental care. Now people have to pay. People who do not have benefits, people who do not have good income, then again, it's uh, uh, it's difficult for them to get proper health care and treatment for all. Uh, the dental care, sorry. It's difficult for them to get proper dental care and to meet all their dental care needs. Um, then again, uh, uh, again, another thing is uh, in the wait time. Sometimes if you need to see a specialist, uh, it's not easy to get an appointment. There's a long wait time to see a specialist. Uh, and then again, uh, for planned surgeries and for planned treatment, sometimes there's a wait list. Uh, if a person needs to have a surgery on the knee or knee replacement or something, then there is a planned surgery, planned treatment, and again, there's a wait list. Uh, uh, whereas, uh, and sometimes if you have a person goes to emergency, again, there's a huge uh, wait time. And these are some of the uh, things we have to deal with here in Canada. But again, uh, I would say overall, we have a very good and very wonderful uh, healthcare system. and. Uh, also very good uh, social support system. So that's reassuring to know because sometimes you hear about the frustrations uh, from the uh, public, you know, about uh, what some of the things that you just told us about. But if you look at the overall picture, we are doing pretty good. Now, if we come back to focus on uh, services that are provided by SACS, so we heard a little bit, you gave us um, an idea about what SACS is about, the not-for-profit organization, and what kind of services it provides to the community. Now, if we come back to that and ask you, so how is it that SACS is playing an important role in maybe some of the frustrations caused by the Canadian healthcare system, whether it be related to physical, mental, or social health? How is SACS providing maybe a bridge of that gap? Uh, yes, uh, SACS, it uh, uh, fills in a very big gap in the Canadian healthcare system. Uh, so our main services are uh, mental health, uh, uh, addiction, and related services such as uh, uh, stress management, anger management, health living, these kind of programs. Now again, uh, when, for people with mental health issues, now again, uh, getting appointment from psychiatrists, it takes a while. And even uh, when they have appointment uh, with psychiatrists, they don't, uh, they don't get enough time to uh, spend in different kind of therapies, for example, cognitive behavior therapy, 
and other uh, regular uh, 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 programs such as stress management, anger management, those kind of uh, related issues, uh, because uh, they have their own workload and they have to do a uh, uh, by their own appointments, which can be once in one month or once in three months, sometimes even once in six months. So for those people uh, with um, uh, mental health issues, uh, that's not enough. They do need, in, in addition to their medications, they do need a regular counseling and regular therapy sessions, which helps a lot uh, in their recovery. Uh, without those things, uh, um, their recovery may take very long time and not be complete and uh, they may uh, uh, those things they uh, they uh, they create setbacks to the recovery. So our services it's a not-for-profit charity organization, and we do uh, get some funding from government and some other funding organizations. But still, we uh, keep applying for more funding and grants to provide better services. And so what we do is uh, we do uh, frequent appointments, uh, immediate appointments, frequent appointments. And we do give appointments even during the week, uh, evenings and uh, uh, even during the weekends to help people. And also we do give yearly appointments, frequent appointments, so that uh, people can get the counseling and therapy they need uh, to overcome their issues. Uh, and amazing. also we uh, people we also help people. Uh, basically our services are free. We do accept voluntary donations, but basically our services are free and also we do provide services for people who do not have health cards and who do not have uh, uh, any proper status uh, so we help all these people uh, uh, so we do fill in a, a big huge gap uh, uh, ourselves and other not for profit charity organizations we fill up that big need that's that's amazing. You definitely are part of that universal healthcare that is being provided by Canada. And uh, it, uh, our viewers who are watching us can now realize, yes, there are some some uh, you know disadvantages to the healthcare system. No system is perfect, but we we have community leaders like you and, and with your organizations that can come in and fill those gaps. We will have a better healthcare system overall. So where can our viewers find information if they wanted to access your services? Where they, where can you direct them in terms of getting more information? Uh, yes, uh, uh, people can visit our website, uh, www.sax.org. Uh, so I will repeat, www.sax.org. They can get all the information about our uh, organization there and also people they can call this number 647-718-0786 so when they call this number they can get all the information and they can also get uh, uh, immediate appointments as well when someone calls us we give them the information they need and also we give them appointments uh, we do have group counseling programs individual counseling programs community outreach programs and other programs so when they call us uh, they can get started uh, immediately uh, probably the same week so that uh, we try to get them started without uh, uh, waiting time that is great so now we must know where to find your services and uh, they know they're not alone if they're stuck uh, getting help they can approach you we have more to find out but before that it's time for a short break Welcome back to Spotlight. We are talking to Dr. Maher Hussain, CEO and Director of Clinical Services at SACS. So thank you, Dr. Maher Hussain, for enlightening us about how SACS is providing a lot of services that is bridging that gap that might be uh, present in our healthcare system. I'm going to come back to you as a community leader now. I know you are also part of, you mentioned in passing initially that you're part of many organizations. Uh, can you highlight some of the other organizations that you are part of that you provide your uh, you know, services to, your expertise to? 
miss uh, so uh, I, I also go as a work uh, as a mental health consultant uh, and a mental health uh, specialist in uh, different organizations as well. In addition, also we also work with other organizations. We network with other organizations as also while putting our services. So the organizations I work with and network with is one is a uh, uh, William Osler Health Center, Brampton Hospital. Uh, so we do get referrals from there, and also I do. Um, provides services there as well. Uh, and also another organization is uh, Kelly's Place. They they provide services for autism and other uh, mental health issues in children and adults as well. Then another place is the uh, Health and Recovery Home. They do provide services for the addiction issues, alcohol addiction and other uh, uh, addiction issues. And also we also collaborate with the uh, uh, Sayyid of Fatija Center uh, for providing our uh, mental health and other uh, uh, services as well. Uh, so uh, uh, these are some of the services we provide. And also another uh, multi, uh, TMAC, Tamil Nadu Multicultural uh, Association. We do network with them and we work with them also providing services. Uh, another uh, place uh, where we provide services is uh, uh, regeneration uh, <clears throat> outreach services. They do have a food bank and uh, provide free food uh, for people in need. And uh, so now we work with them and we provide services uh, with them also. Uh, these are some of the places we, where uh, uh, I do uh, go as a consultant and I work with them, also network with them and we uh, provide our services as well. Wow, Dr. Maher Hussain, you have a lot on your plate. I mean, it sounds like uh, you're in every uh, sector of society wherever they need that help. Again, uh, keyword being bridging that gap, being complementary to the healthcare and the social uh, system that we have in Canada. I, I have to ask you, I mean, uh, we could easily take the easy way out, you know, and be in our comfort zone and uh, just assume somebody else will take on the role as a community leader and help uh, the community progress. We could easily take that easy way out. What inspires you to give so much back to the community? Yeah, it uh, feels um, uh, giving back to the community. It, uh, it's a very, uh, uh, it's a very good uh, <clears throat> thing to do, which gives us happiness and satisfaction of the, uh, giving it back to the community when we have got so much from the community. It's, uh, uh, now when we help someone, like, it makes us happy. It makes us uh, uh, feel better that we are able to uh, do something. Uh, so involved in our community activities and uh, charity activities. Uh, uh, so it uh, not really helps in helping the community. Also, it, uh, it also gives us a sense of satisfaction and uh, uh, happiness that we are doing something to help the community and uh, doing something which the community needs. Well said. So it sounds like you're quite happy uh, doing the work you're doing, so it's not really work. But I still have to ask you, what do you do to relax, like as an individual to recuperate, you know, take a break sometimes for yourself? What do you do? Uh, so for me to uh, relax, one thing I like is uh, I like reading. Um, uh, uh, especially at the end of the day, at the night, I do some reading before I uh, go to bed. Uh, so reading it uh, helps us to relax well. Then other things are listening to music. And again, um, yeah, as part of our uh, programs, uh, stress management and relaxation exercises, uh, it's a very important part of our group counseling program and other programs. We do provide those services. Uh, people, when they I have a, when we, in our group counseling program, we also have sessions for a, a relaxation. Uh, people, they, uh, we do also give a hands-on training. People, they learn relaxation exercises, such as deep breathing exercise and meditation. They learn it, they practice it there so that they practice it every day at home. So I do practice those relaxation exercises as well, deep breathing and meditation. Um, and then again, uh, I do like traveling and also doing some exercises, uh, spending time with family, going out with family. 
so these are some other things i do to uh, uh, for my self care and for me on the relaxation which i enjoy amazing amazing so you practice what you preach uh, being the psychiatrist and the community leader that you are and of course uh, uh, if people uh, of you as you need to check out saxa still being continuing to provide services during the covid 19 restrictions and they are also providing a lot of educational seminars so hats off to sax hats off to you dr mahar hussain and your team now if you had any uh, words of advice for our viewers uh, anybody out there you know struggling with challenges in life or struggling just to reach their goals in life do you have any words of advice for them uh, so just uh, one word of advice is uh, now we also do work with the uh, legal system uh, many people with mental health and addiction issues they are they have legal uh, uh, they are they have legal problems such as uh, they are charged with issues such as drinking and driving violence domestic violence and other alcohol and drug related charges and uh, anger and violence related charges most of them i find uh, Uh, they don't spend enough time for relaxation the stress keeps on building on them until they explode so it's uh, like we mentioned before it's very important for them to spend some time on relaxation and relaxation exercises you know, so that uh, it's very good for their mental health and physical health and to have good relaxation that uh, help that helps them to have a good uh, healthy life and also helps them to have good relationship with others and to stay away from other issues such as stress which can lead to mental health issues physical health issues anger violence alcohol and drugs uh, so one thing is to have good relaxation and spend time on relaxation and relaxation exercises another thing is to be uh, helpful to other people is to help them uh, uh, that way and their mind is diverting positive things and not negative things when people uh, help others uh, it's uh, it's very it helps them a lot in having a good healthy life for themselves and others too well said thank you very much dr mahar hussain for uh, coming on the show today inspiring us with your journey and enlightening us about what you provide through sax we wish you all the best and we will continue to follow your work Uh, thank you my thanks uh, uh, for having me it's nice uh, meeting you and uh, uh, spending time with you thank you very much so that was dr mahar hussain who has inspired us today to take part in our community and thanks to him for enlightening us about sax well that's a wrap for this week's show continue to follow us on facebook twitter and write to us at spotlight@ethnicchannels.com Until next week this is Amita signing off encouraging you to be a part of your community